<laughs> you're you're gonna absolutely love this. It, do it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. As I'm sure you guys know, I absolutely love making videos, if that wasn't clear by now, doing this for 13 years. But did you know that I also love making games? And I am so, so excited this week because when I went to visit my parents a few weeks ago, I picked up some of our old computers and on there, like the title suggests, and I also found some floppy disks as well, which I'll get to in a minute, but on those computers, like the title suggests, was some games that I made in Microsoft PowerPoint, and they are actually hilarious, and it's an amazing trip down memory lane to play all these again, so I really hope you enjoy what I've got to show you in this episode. So I've actually decided to turn this into a little mini-series about my game development journey. If you guys didn't know, I also went to college and university, to study game design, so next week I'm going to tell you guys all about what happened there and then in the third episode I'm going to talk a bit about what I've done after uni and the sort of games I've been working on in my spare time and a sneak peek as to what's to come in the future as well. And of course, like always, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the episode and please check out Patreon. I've had a few new Patreons since the last episode and I could not be happier. So thank you all so much for the support, I really really do appreciate it. Now on with the video. Okay, so here they are. I'm genuinely really excited to try these out. Some of these I haven't seen in about 20 years. It really, it really has been that long. And this is going to be really interesting to see what I was thinking back then. So um, I have briefly gone through them all to make sure they all work. So there's some random ones that aren't really what you could class as games. And then there's a few that were actually playable, as playable as they could be. And then unfortunately there was a few corrupt ones which I couldn't get working at all. And then, this is really special, I'm going to save this till after. There's all of this which I can't wait to get into. It's going to be really interesting. So let's get started by taking a look at the first playable game that I've got in this folder here called X Games 34 And it says here that it was last modified on the 2nd of August 2003. But I don't think that's the date that I actually made these. I think that's the date that I transferred them off the old computer onto floppy disks. I've actually got a few floppy disks here that I found some of these games on and some of the other ones were from a different computer that we got in 2003. So I think somehow I'd transferred these off of an older computer. But either way, this is X Games 34. I've got no idea where the other 33 of them were, but I, at the time I really loved watching the X Games and it looks like only one of these things is actually selectable. So I guess we'll try going skateboarding. So don't you just love the word art in this? This is absolutely amazing already. And I loved, I think I'd only just found out about animations at the time. So look at all these random things flying around. So I never actually got very far in this one. As far as I remember, there's only one race. <laughs> you're you're going to absolutely love this. It, do, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So apparently you're playing as this little clip art guy here and the way you actually control the game is by pressing left and right on the keyboard and the idea was that you'd move across this track and so you'd get to this point here and you pick this star up and that word that just flew out the bottom there said power up collected and then you get this star and it doesn't actually do anything you can't actually click on it and the guy underneath has hit this barrier and that's twisted sideways and then this purple guy on the bottom he seems to have got a good idea and he's going to try and go and pick that up. So let's carry on. And it looks like the barrier has doubled up. And I just want to check that there's nothing I can actually click on. It doesn't look like it. So let's carry on. And then for some reason, a boulder just flies in from nowhere and hits the guy on the bottom. And you manage to walk straight past the barrier. And so does the guy from before. I'm just going to check. You can't actually click on that star at all. Not yet anyway. So... Let's carry on. That boulder's just hit the guy at the bottom, but he seems unfazed by it. Although it did make him drop down a bit there, and I'm in second place now, and he's picked up something. I don't know whether I thought this was supposed to be like some sort of two-player game or something, but he's picked up these green arrows. No idea what they were meant to do, and I'm up here. And now the arrows have gone yellow. The opponent used... and that went way too fast. The opponent's used its power up again, and he's blasted off into first place, and now I came in last. And that's the end of the game, as far as I can tell. So, 
I wonder if I can actually open this up in Keynote and have a look at the actual slides. Let's see if there's anything that was missed there in that PowerPoint viewer before we move on to the next one. So, yeah, there'll be a few missing fonts, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to see what the actual slides look like on this one. So, let's see if there's anything we didn't actually see in the game itself. Nope, that's it. There's only 17 slides in this whole game, and that is absolutely everything that I did with that one. Okay, so that was X Games 34. Now, apparently, the next one up is Laser Show, last modified in August 2005. Even though it says there it was created in 2009, so I'm not sure what's going on with the dates on that one. There we go. I remember being really impressed with what I've managed to do from this game. I remember that when I made this one, I was actually really obsessed with Llamasoft's games, and I'm sure you can tell that I put that sort of psychedelic feeling into this one as well, so... I have no idea what's going on, and I honestly have no recollection of what this actual game is. I think it was all just a crazy light show that I wanted to make. Let's have a look at the credits first. <laughs> oh my god. If you think people are bad at using crazy animations in PowerPoint, just show them this. Special thanks to Microsoft. Oh my god, look at the words go. This is insane. I really have no recollection of this whatsoever. Uh, let's see whether I can make this one full screen. That's a bit better. There you go. Special thanks to Llamasoft for helping me come up with this crazy concept. Is there anything else to it? It's loading something. Now we've got a new background. And apparently there's some extras. So shall we have a look and see if I put anything in there? It's clickable, but it doesn't seem to actually go anywhere, so... I'll have a look into the uh, file in the background to see if that actually goes anywhere. And it looks like, oh wow, there's a lot to get into in this one. So game two is clickable. Game one is clickable. Let's start with game one. And I'm sure some of you guys recognize that sound effect there. Yes, that's from Sonic R. So let's see if I actually made any instructions for this one. Seems like I put a lot more effort into this than the other game. <laughs> okay, so the instructions don't actually do anything, they just cause lightning, so let's start the game instead. And we've got a few random laser sounds, they might be a little bit too loud. Is it actually going to be playable? Apparently the game's called Laser Flakes. Oh, it's still doing something. Okay, give it a second. Okay, here we go. To create a new player, click on the button at the top right. Three exclamation marks. My god, the animations are really slowing this down. Enter your name. Apparently, the name is Zoid Poik. <laughs> okay, done. We're done with that. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. <laughs> ready? I really have no recollection of this whatsoever. <laughs> Is there actually a game to this? Okay. <laughs> I think I kind of remember what the idea was. You're basically playing as this blue square down here, and you have to try and get to the red square at the top, but you can only go on these things. So let's move forward one. And then the background went a bit crazy. And then for some reason this one's greyed out, and I don't know whether I'm supposed to press continue, or whether I'm supposed to press the grayed square there, and that one doesn't seem clickable. Let's press continue and see what happens. <laughs> that just causes lightning strikes. So let's try clicking on that. Okay. And now the two squares have combined and everything's becoming giant for some reason. <laughs> Would you like to try again? Yes or no? Neither of them are actually clickable. Okay, let's load this back up and see if I can actually get to the end of this. Let's try pressing game one without going on the credits first. So the instructions still don't do anything. Let's see if this actually does anything this time. Okay. My god, I am almost crying. This is so funny. Is it actually going anywhere? Okay, gotta wait for that extra animation. For some reason, the animation seems to be actually playing smoother now than it was last time. Okay, here we go. Yep, create a new player. We've done that. Zoid Poik. Here we go. Are you ready? 
I don't even think there is any of the ways you can actually get through this. So I might just have to open the actual files up. Let's see if I can click on anything else. I don't know whether that was supposed to be like a timer up there that's just sort of timed out. That seems to be the only thing that I can actually click on. I wonder if I can use the arrow keys. No, that just keeps playing that animation again. Okay, pressing up has changed the background for some reason. Let's see if that makes any difference. No, it's done game over. So let's try opening this one in Keynote and see if we can see anything else that wasn't actually uh, viewable. So let's see what have we got here. Let's make this full screen. Hopefully OBS can still see this. And we're just going to click through here. Oh, some of these you won't be able to see anything because of the... Oh, okay, that's different. So let's see if this does anything. Wow, that background hurts my eyes. Apparently this was the extras menu. That wasn't actually... Oh yeah, I don't think it works very well in Keynote because it tries to play all of the animations one after the other. I think I might have just broke the game. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Language Yurt Art Dino Tufo. And I remember being really, really proud of this one. And I did have a quick look at this one before making this video, and it's actually hilarious. And it's just, what the hell was I thinking? So, basically, this is sort of like a quiz game where you have to try and understand what all the different characters were saying. So, if I click on Go to Home Page, this brings you to the start of the game, so you can read about the characters. You can figure out how to read their languages. So let's start with... This is all I've seen, by the way. So anything after this point is completely new to me. From me 20 years ago, anyway. So let's have a look at Profile 1. I, I remember putting a lot of effort into this. So this wizard likes to speak in a different language. Oh, hell. So H-E-L-L-O. So there must be some sort of pattern to read in those. So let's have a look at the next character. This character can only speak in numbers. 15, 12, 12, 5, 8. I think I know what these were. These were on the old uh, sort of phones with uh, predictive text. So you would type in the numbers and it would actually come up with words that would help you understand what they were saying in this game. So, <laughs> okay, apparently this third one, this lady in the house... This lady in the car here lives in this house. And there's an arrow pointing to the house and likes mixing up words. Ula said mo ti top. I have no idea what that one's trying to say, but it looks like I can click on the car. Well, it doesn't do anything. So next character, he can speak backwards. Hi, guys. <laughs> and I think I just covered his face in blue for some reason. So I think that's all of the characters. So, how to read the different language used in the menus only. Hello, you, is... Always read in twos, but the last letter, you need to go back one. H-E-L-L-O-Y-O-U. So, it makes sense. You read forwards, and then you skip one, and then you read back. So, hopefully that makes sense to all of you. So, uh, I kind of don't have a button to go back to the front page. Um, I might actually just restart it because I think I'm stuck now so let's give that a quick restart and we can jump back into the game as far as this actually is a game so so that says hello everybody can you figure out what I'm trying to say so next puzzle actually takes you to the first puzzle in the game which is apparently called test 2 and you can kind of make it out without having to do all the things. So this says, good evening, everybody. How do you do? Not sure what that bit says. Tis. It. It's. I don't even. This has got nothing to do with the characters that we read about. It's getting. Tins. It. I don't know what that's trying to say. If you guys can figure that out, let me know in the comments below. We're going to move on to the next one. 
This is test three. <laughs> that one's all in productive text. I'd need to get out some old phone to figure that one out. I have no idea. I think at least. So if anyone's got an old phone lying around or has anything that can do predictive text in, type this in and let me know what it says because I'm not going to go through the effort of trying to figure that out right now. And apparently that is the whole game. So let's try and open this one up in Keynote and see if there's any slides that we missed out on. I hope you guys are enjoying this, by the way. I know this is a very different video to usual, but I am having a ton of fun looking through all of these old presentations that I made back in the day. So let's extend this out a bit. Don't worry about the missing fonts. Let's just see if there's anything that we didn't see. Okay, I don't think we saw that screen. That's if you click choose a character, I suppose. It takes you to this one and then it just goes through their introductions. Um, and yeah, that's as far as I got in that game. Not as much as I remember. I remember it being a lot bigger than that, but there you go. So this one, 2.7 webs. This is one that I haven't actually opened at all since I found the files. So I have no recollection of what this game is like whatsoever. So I'm really, really excited to try this one. So welcome to webs. So we've got home, back, next, and a big play button there. So let's try pressing the play button. So go to the village inside the house, okay? Go to the village inside the house. I think this is a bit broken. To play the game, maybe? See the legendary red cylinder to play a game, or... I'm not sure what that says. That might just say back, or something. So, let's try this one first. Okay, that just goes back to the title screen. Okay, see the legendary red cylinder to play a game. <laughs> what the hell is that? Okay, so we got block game, or we got face game. Let's try block game. You chose the man, <laughs> did I? It didn't give me a choice. For this game, you have to match blocks to the same color. You have to make lines across the board. Level one, block game. Okay. Oh, I kind of remember this. It's basically, there's two different colors and you just have to match the colors up on both sides. So the idea was you'd click whatever color wasn't there and then it would tell you where you're allowed to move it. So click on the yellow one, move it over there. Well done. Level two. And for some reason there's a random ball on this one. So line the red. But for some reason it only lets me click on that red, not the other one. And then I can put the red over there. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why the red's gone down there. And now apparently I can't click on anything. And that's the end of the game. Okay, that seems a bit broken. Let's try the other game, see if that actually does anything. Let's just load it back up. And then we can once again have a look through Keynote and see if there's anything missing. So, yeah, let's try let's try the face game. And then we can see if a level 2 actually does exist for the other one. Oh my god, how many arrows did I want to add there? And gunshots. Use the arrows to control the face across the massive levels and look out for gems. That's why there's loads of arrows, because I've got to use them to move around the levels. Wow, what a mess. So, go up the stairs. I don't know whether I'm supposed to click the face, the arrow. It's pointing to the arrow, but that's also clickable. But let's try using the arrows. So, go up the ladder. I didn't even put that on the screen, but go up the ladder. And then, and then that just changes font completely. And then there's loads of gems around here. So I guess I have the option to either collect a gem or to carry on up the ladder. So let's try and pick a gem up. Choose a gem. What gem shall I pick? I'll pick the one at the top. 200 points. Woo. Uh, carry on up. Click the cube to continue. <laughs> there wasn't even a cube there a second ago. And now it's popped up at the bottom of the screen. And the arrows, do they actually do anything? That one just resets. I don't know why there's explosions all up there, but let's do what it's telling me. Let's click the cube. You got one gem, you scored 200 points. Onto level space, 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 space two. <laughs> click to go to level two. Level two, this one's underwater for some reason. And now we're outside by a bridge. 
And although there's two arrows, I can only choose this one. So let's do it. <laughs> what the hell? Now the whole background's gone into like an iceberg and now there's a weird portal there and there's a arrow on the top of that roof and there's another arrow down here and I got 200 points for going through a weird circle covered in different coloured arrows. It's like a circus thing and there's a whole load of more arrows up here. Oh my god, I have no idea what to click on now. Apparently that's the end of the level. So do I go back down there? Do I go over here? Do I go up? Let's try going up. That, <laughs> that took me back to level 2. Okay, let's try again. So let's try pressing... Okay, that one just takes you back to the start, so it must be this one over here. And that one also takes you back to the start. Okay, I clicked on the door, and now a flying saucer has appeared. And I'm back at the start again. And apparently the flying saucer is just a top hat. Because uh, I didn't know how to draw a flying saucer, I presume. So let's go this way now. Okay, so now I'm over here. And... Now... I don't know what the point of these arrows up here are. Oh, okay, that one actually worked. Now I got 200 points and I got a gem over there. And the flying saucer disappeared. So <laughs> let's go down here now. Let's see if I can get this gem. I don't know why I didn't move that time. I'm still at the top. Let's go up the jump. Click on this. Why do I click on that? Okay, I don't know why the font keeps changing. Look at that. Clip art. Comic Sans, I mean. You collected a gem. Hooray. 200 points. You click on play. So I got my 200 points. Now the flying saucer's back again. Can I oh, okay, that's actually different. So now the flying saucer's got a trampoline underneath it. Or something. And the only arrow I can click is the back arrow. And now these arrows have changed colour. Another gem's appeared. I'm going I think I'm just going back to the start. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Okay, let's carry on from... This bit. So it says the trampolines appeared, and now it looks like the doors doubled up. Uh, I can click on the face, and now I'm inside the door, and now, the <laughs> now there's all kinds of arrows just dotted around the place. Let's see what that one does. Okay, now I've turned red, and I'm on the trampoline, and there's... Okay, clicking on that arrow doesn't really work by the looks of it, so let's try and skip forward again. I've got to finish this somehow. Go up, go up, whoa, that's new, okay, go up again. You've got the flying saucer, do you want to change games? 600 points. You won, you got 1,200 points and 200 from the first level. That means you got a massive 1,400 points and unlocked a new player, apparently. Wow, okay, I did put a lot of effort into this one. So let's try choosing the man. For this game, you have to mo match the blocks to the same colour. Oh, that's why it told me I chose the man before. Now I'm back on this game again. Well done. Let's see if I can actually get past level 2 this time. But there's nowhere else I can actually... Oh, okay, I actually did click down there this time. And, okay, that actually is the end of the game. So let's open this one up with Keynote. And see what wonders await us in this file. This is actually amazing for me i really hope you guys are enjoying this as much as i am because this is such a blast from the past even if i only half remember any of this stuff wow it looks like there was a load of slides for this one can i bring that out a bit yeah there we go I can get a bit of a closer look so that's all of this level here i have no idea what this was supposed to be by the way look at that I dragged all of these little lines in separately. That's insane. The amount of time I must have spent putting these random levels together that make absolutely no sense. So, uh, level two. Let's try using the arrow keys to flick through these. Is there anything I missed? 600 points. You win. Okay, that's a different... I have no idea what this one is, so choose a player quick. And it looks like he's about to be hit by a giant thing like that. Okay, is that, that is actually part of the A, and there's another A. I'm going to try and play this one, actually, see if this does anything. Yeah, that's what I got last time. Maybe if you leave it for a minute. Oh, there we go. Okay. So if you leave it, it tells you to be quick. But nothing actually happens after that. 
So <laughs> that's pretty funny though. Uh, oh, that's weird. So the block game there is actually before the bit that you go into the house. Uh, oh, there you go. So that says go back to play the webs game or to see the legendary red cylinder. So I don't know what the webs game was. I don't think that actually exists. And I never finished that level 2. That's all there is to that one. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed game 2.7 webs. Now there's one... No, I don't want to save it. There's one more to look at, which is called Extreme Sports Game. Okay, so this is the final one, Extreme Sports Game. And I did just look at the slides for this one, and I don't think there's much to it. So I don't actually think I got much done on this one. So let's see if anything can actually happen. So skateboarding. There's a skateboard. There's one tiny little rail. And then I guess the idea was that I was going to fill this side up with all the different things that you could do, like tricks and stuff. But all the options there are grind, and it says rail 50, spin 100, and that's it. That is the entire presentation. And for some reason that one was in a different format as well, so I had to open it a bit differently. But if I open it back up with Keynote, you can actually see there is nothing else to this one at all. It's literally just that. So there wasn't exactly much to show in that other folder, but I did find this, which is really interesting. This is a PowerPoint presentation that I made for a presentation class in school, all about the history of Nintendo. So I thought you guys would find that kind of interesting to look at. I think I made this in 2007, so I think it goes up to everything then. But you can tell just how much of a nerd I was even back at school. So I remember standing up in front of the class in English and talking through all this about how Nintendo used to have a taxi company, how they used to make cars, how they lost a lot of money at the Olympics. So much detail that went into this. So Nintendo saw that games were becoming popular, so this is how they made Donkey Kong and the uh, TV Game 6, I think it was called, yeah? Coloured TV Game 6, Mario to Jumpman, all that sort of stuff. I won't go through all of this now, but I just thought this was really interesting to show you guys. And this was even before I'd even started doing YouTube at all. In fact, I think YouTube was only like one year old at the time, which is kind of weird to think about considering how long it's been around today. So I just went through all the different systems, some of my favourite games, talked a bit about the SNES PlayStation. So I guess some people would have thought that was interesting about the 64DD there and a few of the games there, a bit about the GameCube. And then about the Wii, 2006 to 2000 XX. And this image here even has the prototype version of the Wii remote that's got the nunchuck actually plugged in like that. And here's some early Wii screenshots, I think. And here's some of the handhelds leading up to the most recent one at the time, which was the DS Lite by the looks of it. And a few other consoles there as well. The Pokemon Mini, the Micro vs. Machine. Mario's timeline up to 2007 and look at some games and some characters. So I just thought that was really interesting to show you all. I really did get a kick out of that. Unfortunately nothing else really works or there's really much to show. This one's just a load of random Sonic GIFs. And you know these two just didn't open at all. They just refused to open. They just Close right off, look, office detected a problem. So before I move on to telling you guys all about Hyarkin, which was a huge part of my life, I first just want to show you guys these because these are actually amazing as well. These are so these are really weird concept drawings that I made in primary school. So these are probably late 90s. So this one is called Blob's Life, and I'm not even gonna try and make sense of this. It looks like you played the game inside a Happy Meal lunchbox kind of thing. And you could either grab stuff or you could use the ice cream button. And there was a sort of maze that you would walk around and level 4 would be a blob. Level 5 would be a weird ice cream cone thing. I have no idea what's going on. And if you can see that on the side there, let's see if I turn this round and well, let me zoom in. Yes, if I zoom in here, for PlayStation 3, and have a look at what I thought the PlayStation 3 would look like. Like a GameCube, I suppose. Although I don't even think the GameCube was out at this point, so that's kind of forward thinking on my part. But yeah, that's one of many very weird game ideas. So let's have a look at the second one, 
which is called Blob's Life 2. And this one looks completely different. It's still got the same little alien character. It's still got the same blob chasing you, but the blob has evolved. Blob to Blob 2. Blob is going to get you. And again, you've got fries, ice creams, and burgers. And there's a power up inside a box that gives you a 20 super jump. And same controls, and I actually spelt controls wrong, so... Once again, I've got no idea what I was actually thinking, but I just thought these were really fun to show. And now, Blob 3. And this one plays entirely on a cube. It looks like some sort of fun park thing. But in this one, you play as a little dog with, an with antenna, for some reason. And the Blob is here now. And he actually became a spot slime, which is something else I want to come back to in a minute. So, that's it for the Blob. Oh no, it's not. There's Blob 4 and 5 as well. So this is called the Blob Collection with the Blob 4 and the Blob 5. And again, I don't know. I must have been eating a lot of McDonald's at the time because again, you've got fries, banana, a drink, a cheese packet. Oh my god, this is so weird. And this one's kind of evolved from being just on a cube to being on like a weird staircase thing. I don't even know. So the Blob in this one looks like a PlayStation controller. And there's something else up here called the new blob. And that's you this time. You're not a weird dog thing anymore. You're more like a... I don't know, a burger with eyes? I, I have no idea. So that's the blob 4 and 5. And then we've also got this weird thing, which was a spot slime. Which is unfortunately something that I couldn't find. But spot slimes is something that I spent a lot of time coming up with when I was little. I haven't got the floppy disk for that one here. But there was actually something I used to make called Spot Slime Weekly, which was like a weekly magazine about all of these weird creatures. And I used to send them to my uncle and he used to read them and I came up with different ideas to put in next week's episode and stuff. And it was a whole big thing. I guess it was kind of like Pokemon looking back on it, but there were so many different ones. They all had different names and they all came from different places. And I was planning on making a huge game about them all, but that never really took off. But here's one of them. I think this is one of the only original drawings that I've still got left, but I used to have notebooks full of the things. If I ever find it in the future, I will definitely try and do a video on them because it is something that I spent a long time on. Oh yeah, this is something really interesting as well. My mum actually made this for me. So this is one of the spot slimes. This is the Indian spot slime. I don't know what's going on with this filter. I think at the time we just got like some photo editing program for the computer, so... We were a bit excited putting filters and everything. But basically, my mum actually made me a plushie of one of the spot slimes. This one's the Indian spot slime. And basically, he travels around the world in the jet engine of aircraft. And he parachutes out of them whenever he gets to India. That was his whole thing. I have no idea what I was thinking at the time. But he does exist somewhere. And I wish I could find him to show you guys. Maybe in the future. And now, before we get on to hierarchy, the main point of this video, we've got two other game ideas. This one is very clearly inspired by F-Zero. This is called Off-Road 2000, and it's a very basic sort of Micro Machines top-down thing with a kind of F-Zero car. And I used to have a program on our old computer called Coral Move, and I actually used to make like flickbook animations of these games. And I wish I could have found them as well, but unfortunately I didn't, so I've only got these drawings to go off. But I really hope you're finding this as fascinating to look at as I am. And here's another one. This is another one of those F-Zero games. I presume this was from Off-Road 2000 at the time. And you can tell I was playing a lot of Sonic Adventure 2 at the time, because there's Omo Chow, for some reason, being a referee in this racing game. And there's another car over there called Star Jump. And there's the finish. So... I was so happy when I found these on the computer, I have no idea. It's brought back so many good memories, and I'm sure there's a load more game ideas that I've got in random notebooks. I really, really hope they're still out there somewhere, and if I do ever find them, I will definitely make another part to this episode. Okay, so this is what I've really been wanting to talk about. I actually found the floppy disk for this. This was a game called Hierarchin, which I spent many years of my life back in school trying to make, but unfortunately, a lot of the files have got corrupted, but I managed to get a few things off this, and I also found a few other files. This is a game that I spent about five years working on, and there's a lot here. 
So I'm going to start, you can see just how many times I tried to recover this. I even paid a company to try and get some things off of this floppy disk for me and they could only find these two images. So they're really, really small and blurry. They're recovered files and I don't remember them looking this bad at all, but this is all they managed to get off it, which is really sad because I was really, really looking forward to playing this again after so long. I remember this got to about 2000 slides Basically, let me try and paint a picture of what it was for you. It was basically like a mist style point and click adventure game. I went around and took actual photos that I put back into the game itself. And it kind of played a little bit like Pokemon as well. So I actually managed to find this one single idea that I'd written down in a notebook. I've got notebooks full of ideas from this game somewhere. But this is the only one that I could actually find. And it looks like there was some sort of Pokedex style thing where you'd be able to catch monsters and see what they were and this drawer in here this is basically what the game looked like so around the side and around the bottom you'd have different buttons that you could press to go to different places and then you'd have your main character called Zaya obviously a nod to Zelda in the middle and then you'd have bits in here that you could click on to go into the different areas there was puzzles like this where you'd have to change the numbers and letters around I remember there was a puzzle, like a spot the difference thing, and there was a bit where you have to follow a ball down a, down a maze. There was so much to it, and I'm so sad that there wasn't really anything that I could find. Oh yeah, there's one of the Spot Slime Weekly things that I talked about earlier. I don't know where that's gone, I've only got this one these days, so I have no idea where that Spot Slime one is, and I really want to try and find it, and then I can show you guys the newsletter that I wrote. But unfortunately, all of the actual PowerPoint files don't open at all. I've tried many times, I've tried sending it off to companies. The only thing that anyone actually managed to get was this PowerPoint animation for the logo on the title screen. And it, it doesn't look right, I don't remember it looking like that, but that's literally all they found. And if you open it with Keynote, unfortunately, there's nothing there. Let's wait for this to open up. Yeah, that's it. And if I try and open up any of the other ones, these were all different attempts of trying to get the file to work. I think this is the main one. So you can see it is 1.4 megabytes, but if you open it up, it just says it can't read the file. This was something else that I found in there. Obviously, I was inspired by Alien. The whole game sort of had an Alien or Blade Runner style feel to it. Um, there's even the story that I managed to find. So there was some bits that I managed to find. So there was this backstory here, which goes into a bit of detail. So there was a planet called Nitro X, uh, which was kind of where the Blade Runner-esque thing came from. There was a big legend. There was something called Templasians trying to destroy the planet and you had to go and rescue crystals and solve different puzzles and fight some gods and they were all called Zaya, and then a thousand years later, that's when you come in and start playing, so it's a really... I spent ages on this, and I'm so sad that there's nothing to show for it, I really am. I even have this... I hope he doesn't mind me showing this, I have this uh, MSN chat message from 2006, which was when we got our next new computer, and I was trying to find a way of getting the file off. Uh, the computer, so let me try and find here. Yeah, so here we go. I was trying to upload Hierarchin, so I was like, ah, what? Hierarchin's too big to upload. The limit is 50 meg. What should I do? I don't want it to go. And then my friend Adam said, try and send it to him. So I tried to send him the file, and I'm really annoyed because I had a look on Hotmail, and it turns out they've actually deleted all of their old emails off the system because I actually. I actually asked him on Facebook, do you still have access to your old email address? But unfortunately, he deleted it, so I had to look back on my sent items. But they don't go back as far as 2006, which I was really annoyed about. So unfortunately, I have nothing else to show. And all I have is my memories of the game and a few files that got recovered out of the PowerPoint, which I'm really, really sad about. So. I'm so sad that I can't find anything about Hierarchy, and I promise you, it was insane for a PowerPoint game. You'll just have to believe me on that. 
So I really hope you guys enjoyed that. That was an amazing trip down memory lane. I had so much fun, if you couldn't tell, just looking through all of that crazy stuff that I made as a kid. It really was an amazing trip down memory lane. So thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe, please check out Patreon, and I will see you next week for part two of my game dev journey. Goodbye.